Scotland is a land known for its many haunted castles, houses and areas. But one stands above the rest in sheer volume of terrifying and unexplained mystery, and that is Glamis Castle. Glamis Castle is situated beside the picturesque village of Glamis in Agnes, Scotland. The castle was built in 1376 by King Robert II of Scotland and granted to Sir John Lyon, the husband of the king's daughter Joanna. The title of Lord Glamis, however, was created for his grandson Patrick Lyon, and the castle itself has consistently been in the Lyons or Boys Lyons family ever since. The castle also played as a childhood home to the late Queen Mother herself, as she is also part of the strong lineage, her parents being the Lord and Lady Glamis at the turn of the 20th century. The castle and surrounding lands have been used as a residence, barracks, for public parks, and for the growth of cash crops including beef and lumber during its long and storied history but it's best known for its hauntings. Several ghosts are associated with the castle and reports of hauntings date back to the 15th century. The ghosts take on several different forms and have many different tales attached to them. Some of the most famous among them are the Monster of Glamis, Earl Beardy and the Grey Lady. The first son of Thomas Bowes Lyon was born in 1821 and was recorded as dying at birth. However, throughout the 19th century, rumours were rife that the child had been born deformed and out of shame was raised in seclusion and secret. These rumours are said to have begun when an unnamed midwife had claimed the child had been born healthy, if not deformed, and was in fine health as she left the castle that night. These rumours were given credence when it was noted that the child Thomas had no official gravesite or tombstone. According to the rumours, the boy was bricked up inside a hidden room and fed through a small slot in the wall, although no such room has ever been discovered. It was also said that the monster boy was also brought out onto a secret secluded part of the roof to exercise, known as the Mad Earl's Walk. The boy is said to resemble a hulking, half frog, half human and depending on the version of the tale you hear, he is said to still be lurking in the castle to this day. Another popular story whose details often get confused with the monster of Glamis tale is the myth of a rival family who are also bricked up inside the castle and left to starve. Because of the similarities between the two stories, the two often get confused. Another popular tale from the castle dates back to the 15th century and is known as Earl Beardy. The story is said to centre on either Sir Alexander Lyon or Sir Alexander Lindsay, which is not certain and depends on the version you hear, but all the versions of the story involve Earl Beardy insisting that he get to play cards. As it was the Sabbath, and gambling on the Sabbath is a sin, all others refused to play. Lord Beardy became so frustrated and enraged at his refusal that he proclaimed loudly that he would play until doomsday or play with the devil himself. A stranger then appeared at the castle, usually described as dressed in all black with a black hood and thought to be the devil himself. He arrived at the castle and joined the Earl in the card game that he wanted so badly. The Earl and the stranger are said to have been heard playing cards, drinking and shouting loudly all night. When the morning came, Earl Beardy was nowhere to be found. In some versions of the tale, the devil takes the Lord Beardy's soul, or wins it from him during their card game, whilst in others, the devil condemns the man to play his blasted card game for all eternity. To this day, the sound of rattling dice can still be heard in the older chambers, and some even claim to hear the cursing and singing of Lord Beardy himself, still playing his cards, and he will continue to do so until Tuesday. Janet Douglas, the Lady Glamis, was born in 1498 and died in 1537. 
She and her entire family, however, were vilified and hated by King James V. Her brother had been King James's stepfather and he was incredibly cruel to him, even keeping him imprisoned in the family home. After the king escaped, he tried to exact his revenge on the Douglas family and Janet was falsely accused of treason against the king, a crime punishable by death. Although she managed to escape the charge of treason, eventually King James brought charges of witchcraft against her. Even though the charges were clearly false and the results of his vendetta against the Douglas family, he was insistent and determined to exact his revenge. In order to get the conviction he so desperately sought, and to gather the evidence needed, the king had Janet's servants and family tortured brutally in order to force them to testify against her as a witch. James was triumphal in his vendetta, and Janet Douglas was burned at the stake on the 17th of July, 1537, as her young son watched on. Her ghost is said to still walk the Glamis Castle to this day. People often claim to see her walking the hallowed halls of Glamis, appearing to many, or to hear her footsteps in the corridors. Those who have not seen her often claim to feel her presence there late at night. There are also several less well-known and less well-documented ghosts around the grounds and chambers of Glamis Castle as well. A tongueless woman is said to roam the grounds of the castle, but there is no other hard information on who she was, other than the description of her being without her tongue and looking dishevelled. A hanged butler too is said to have been the ghost of an unknown servant who committed suicide via the noose in the hangman's chambers, and still haunts the room, lamenting his decision. Also seen in the castle? is the slightly less terrifying African servant boy who is the spirit of a young black servant who was treated badly during life and takes revenge by tripping people who pass the Queen Mother's bedroom door. Rooms will mysteriously lock and unlock of their own accord and the temperature is likely to change for no real reason. Certain rooms and chambers will have loud banging or rattling emanating from them and hard to ignore feelings of being watched have been also reported from visitors to the castle. Today the castle is open to the public, so if you'd like to investigate any of these tales for yourself, you're able to, to a certain degree. Personally, I found the castle fascinating. Just the sheer level of activity in Glamis Castle is staggering and the amount of reports, stories and documentation is a writer's dream for tales of the paranormal. Of course, I've only covered the tip of the iceberg here. Many more ghosts and ghouls exist within the halls of Glamis Castle, waiting to be discovered. What do you think? Would you like to spend the night gambling with Lord Beardy? Perhaps hunting for the monster? Or do you wish to console the Grey Lady and calm her spirit? Eh, believe it or not, it's up to you. When it comes to the tales of the Glamis Castle, I think we can all be certain. It's grim. That's ghoulish. Good night. <laughs>